so we're in the back of the Hyundai Santa Fe. Uh, it's part of a, it's a very large convoy right now. Uh, and so for this stint, I'm stuck in the back of the car, which means I'm at the peril of somebody else. It's just not fun. But mercifully, being back here, I am very comfortable. These seats actually recline quite a far away. I'm in a corner right now, just the best possible time to demonstrate this. Um, like I said, I'm at the mercy of somebody else driving, which means that I'm not really... And now I can demonstrate the seats. So these seats actually go quite some way. So you can have them nice and upright if you like to sit upright. You can lean back when there's no one behind you and you can just chill out over a long drive. Um, sitting back here, there's lots of leg room, there's lots of headroom. There are no sun blinds, which is slightly annoying. But for the most part, you can tell that this car is made for long distance cruising. It's really comfortable back here. Everything is very well damped. The suspension, you can tell, has been perfectly tuned for our roads, so it's not too harsh, but there's not a lot of body roll through the corners either. It's, it's a nice sensation back here. I quite like sitting back here. If I'm honest, we've got another 20-30 minutes, so I'm just going to chill out and have a nap. Excuse me. lunch stop uh, halfway through our media drive with the Hyundai Santa Fe right behind me um, now as I may have mentioned earlier in the video or I might not because the footage is kind of shaky this is the executive uh, 2.4 litre petrol model which is two-wheel drive and uh, this is the car that we started off the day with and amazingly because we were under the impression that these cars the two-wheel drive models would be staying on road and the four-wheel drive models would be taken off-road but it seems that in order to get here evidence enough actually with this car you can see just how muddy this car is because we had to go through some properly rough terrain to get to our lunch spot now it's worth noting that again this car is entirely two-wheel drive it's running on road tires there's been no special modifications to it this is exactly how you'd buy a Santa Fe 2.4 petrol executive two-wheel drive from a showroom and it performed valiantly honest to goodness this is very much a premium soft roader to our eyes and to the eyes of most for that matter but it performed really, really well on properly difficult terrain, or properly difficult, difficult conditions that would have probably rendered most of its rivals stuck. Uh, but this car is very much not stuck, and if you come with me, we can show you some evidence of just how bad this has got. So, you can see the front end of this car is properly plugged in mud. Uh, I mean, this is freaking everywhere. Uh, and if you move down to the side, you can see this car's actually been through some water. We have some footage of this car wading through a river. It did really, really well. But you can see that there's mud everywhere, all over the wheels, down the sides. I mean, this is dirtier than you will ever see cars like these on a regular basis. Now, if I'm honest, 90% of buyers of the Hyundai Santa Fe, even the four-wheel drive models will not be doing stuff like this. But the fact that even the two-wheel drive can do this is really, really impressive. So right now, we actually have to rush a little bit because I'm just seeing the four-wheel drive models coming back from their little four-wheel drive expedition. And now it's our turn to go out and go and see how that car can do on even more difficult conditions. Let's go! So can you. It really is that easy. Okay, so we're driving back to base camp on some gravel right now. It's pretty easy going, if I'm honest. But driving this car on this road right now, honestly, after having gone through all that, all that stuff, all that muck earlier, I can't help but as a professional, rethink all the things I've ever said about soft roaders, about how they can't do this sort of thing, they're not designed to do this sort of thing, they can't do it, they can't do it, they can't do it, it doesn't matter. 
suddenly I'm driving this through some properly difficult roads, things that I wouldn't tackle in this or wouldn't even dream of tackling in this. And now I have to rethink all the times I've said nasty things about soft roaders. Perhaps, perhaps, the Santa Fe isn't actually a soft roader. Maybe this is an off-roader made soft as opposed to, look at this. Maybe this is a soft, this is a, an off-roader made soft as opposed to a wagon that's been given some ground oh. clearance. Oh, shit. Uh, sorry, mate. No, it's uh, okay. <laughs> but, it's okay, my bad. I got slapped by a banana leaf. <laughs> But honestly, this car is so much more capable than I have ever given it credit for. And I can't wait to take this out on the road, on the way back to, uh, to where we started this morning, to figure out how it's like to drive out on the open road. Unfortunately, as you can see, we've come to a slightly smaller road off the highway because we've come, we've very nearly come to the end of uh, our preview drive with the 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe. Um, to get here, we've been on motorways, we've been on some back roads, we've been stuck in a traffic jam, and uh, we've been driving the 2.2 litre CRDI turbo diesel. And as far as I'm concerned, because having driven the exit. After having driven the 2.4 litre petrol uh, to Negris Milan and driving this uh, all the way back, it's certain for me that while the 2.4 is perfectly adequate in town, it does leave a little bit to be desired um, out on the open road. This turbo diesel is definitely the best powertrain for this car. The turbo diesel paired with the 8-speed automatic makes it an absolute wonder on the motorway. It sips very little fuel when you're driving uh, at constant motorway cruising speeds um, and the 8-speed automatic is adept enough that when you are driving intently it's not too dim-witted uh, particularly in sport mode which makes a significant difference in how the throttle uh, the throttle and the gearbox reacts to your inputs all right then so it's the end of the day uh, we've done our test drives, we've been driving on-road, we've been driving off-road and we've had a pretty good idea of what the Hyundai Santa Fe, the all-new Hyundai Santa Fe is like. Uh, my verdict? Well, the Santa Fe has certainly elevated Hyundai's status. It is definitely trying to be a lot more premium in its appeal. You can tell that there's a lot more premium features in there, the build quality is a lot better. You know that Hyundai has put a lot of time and effort and thought into the new Santa Fe. On top of that, it is a surprisingly good off-road vehicle, far beyond the capabilities of any other software in this segment, definitely better than any other D-segment mass market SUV out there. Our pick of the range, unfortunately, is not really much of a value buy because we think that the best Santa Fe is the 2.2 litre turbo diesel premium. Uh, it's just because there are certain aspects of the car, the driving experience of it, knowing that there's this beautiful burgundy leather, dual power seats, just, it, it just feels good. And the 2.2 litre turbo diesel is the best fit for that car because it's powerful, it's very efficient and with an 8 speed automatic gearbox, it is absolutely excellent in the motorway. Honestly, this car not only looks good, but it definitely deserves your consideration if you're looking for a big seven-seater SUV. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.